What is going on YouTube world? This is Austin Zayback bringing you another YouTube video and today I wanna to talk about finances. And a lot of people, they get worked up over budgets and what to spend money on and what not to spend money on and I'm here to make this extremely, extremely easy for you and I'm just gonna give you the five things, the five things, okay, that you should definitely stop spending money on immediately. Now, there's probably a ton of stuff out there that you are spending money on every single day. We all are, right? We're going out and we're, we're, we're eating out and we're doing all sorts of different things. But these are gonna be the five things that in my opinion, you need to stop buying immediately, okay? And why should you listen to me? Well, because I have been in a place in my life where I've spent money on the stupidest stuff in the world. And I've also been at another place in my life where I've made millions of dollars and I've been able to actually track what I spend and budget and invest and do a lot of different things that have allowed me to get to where I'm at. So if you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button, click that subscribe button, and let's go ahead and jump right into the five things, again, that you've gotta stop. Like right now, today, you've gotta stop spending money on immediately. All right. Item number one is lottery tickets. And you know what I'm talking about here, right? Once or twice a day, you go to the gas station, you take a look around, maybe you grab a snack or a Red Bull, and then those lottery tickets just catch your eye. You think, what if this is it? This is a day I spontaneously win $65 million, and so you buy a lottery ticket and you feel good about it. Or maybe you go to the grocery store and you buy some groceries and something happens and those dang lottery tickets just catch your attention. Well, the reality of it is, if you're watching this video, you've most likely never won the lottery and I'm just kind of shooting it to you straight here. According to CNBC, the average American spends $1,000 a year on lottery tickets, including everything obviously from scratch off cards that come out of vending machines to the Powerball and Mega Millions and everything in between. And you probably do this hoping obviously that one day you win the lottery, right? You take your mega millions of dollars and you most likely blow every last penny buying new cars and new houses, new clothes, you travel the world and you splurge on anything that you lay your eyes on. And most likely you'd find that by doing so your happiness level actually does not increase at all. Like about 70% of lottery winners, you'd wind up going broke within a few short years and you'd end up just as unhappy or as happy as you are right now. And now I am of course not here to tell you why you would or wouldn't be happy winning the lottery. I'll just go ahead and probably save that for another video. And I mean, after all, as you probably heard, you have a higher probability of getting struck by lightning than you do of winning the lottery. I mean, I think getting struck by lightning is like one out of 12,000 and winning the lottery is one out of 258 million. In other words, you are spending way too much money buying lottery tickets. And I know you're probably thinking, yeah, but Austin, it's not that much money. I mean, $1,000 a year comes out to like $86 a month. I'm here to tell you that you can spend $86 a month on so many other things. And rather than maintaining your crappy situation and just hoping and praying that you win millions, the things I'm going to talk about will make visible progress towards improving the quality of your life. Off the top of my head, a few things that you can spend $86 a month on instead of lottery tickets are potentially a gym membership, an Audible membership, monthly dues for a mastermind type of group that will teach you something valuable, or adding to your emergency fund, getting a yoga membership, Netflix, a subscription box like Dollar Shave Club or BarkBox. I mean, there are so many different things that you can spend under $100 a month on that again, you should not be playing the lottery. And after doing some quick research, here's a list of some one-off random items that you could choose to buy each and every single month rather than buying lottery tickets. And according to a bunch of random people on the internet, they're tried and true in terms of making you happier and improving the quality of your life. All right, first thing is this book right here, and that is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a, <laughs> you fill in the rest, and several others. A seat gap blocker that prevents your fries and spare change from falling down to the cracks, the, the, the abyss, the no return of your car. A nice foam roller to help you roll out those sore muscles. And even a card game to play with your friends or family on game night. A question a day journal to ease you into journaling and help you reflect every single day. 
or even a self-care appointment for something like a facial massage, a pedicure, or whatever it is that you can think of. You get the point. Okay, so moving on to the number two thing, right? The second thing that you're buying every single day that you need to stop buying immediately, and that is bottled water. I did some research and ran some quick numbers, and here's the rundown. Humans are recommended to drink about half of their body weight in water every single day. Let's just say 80 ounces on average. So in order to get your daily water intake, you need to drink about 4.7 bottles of water or basically five bottles of water every single day. And basically you're going through about a case of water every five days, 73 cases a year, just to kind of give you a rough estimate. Now, depending on where you live, your average case of 24 water bottles costs you anywhere from four to $8. However, I have got to assume that you don't remember 100% of the time to grab five bottles of water before you leave your house every morning like clockwork and pack them in your lunch and take them with you to work. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to assume that you buy a minimum of one bottle of water per day out of a vending machine or a gas station, etc., costing you on average $2 every time you do so. Basically, what it breaks down to is you're paying at least $3.75 a day or $1,369 a year on bottled water. And I get it. I'm like you. And there is nothing easier in the world than walking out of the house and grabbing a bottle of water on your way out of the door rather than buying something like a Brita. And having to actually pour a glass of water and drink it before you walk out of the door. Or even worse, there is nothing like having to use your reverse osmosis system that you paid anywhere from twelve dollars to $18,000 for that you never use and then having to actually go out of your way to fill up your stainless steel bottle of water that you can buy on Amazon for less than $20 and you never have to worry about it again. On top of you spending way too much money on water bottles and it actually being totally unpractical, you are also damaging the environment. Now, I'm not an environmentalist and I'm not even sure if that's a thing, but at the end of the day, according to gogreen.org, each bottle of water can take up to a thousand years to decompose and it is extremely harmful for animals and just kind of the world in general. So eliminating this as one of the things that you spend way too much money on is in all reality killing two birds with one stone. Moving on to the third thing you spend way too much money on and that is food. The USDA reports that between 30 to 40% of the entire food supply in America is wasted. Assuming you have a weekly grocery bill of $200, that means about $70 each week or an astonishing $3,640 per year you are wasting on food. Now, on top of wasting that much money on food, you're likely eating out way too much also. And in fact, eating out for me, I don't know about you, is probably the reason why I'm wasting so much money on food. Again, I don't know about you, but I do know about me, and I have great intentions of going to the gym and eating healthy, and what do I do? I go to the grocery store, I buy a bunch of healthy food, and of course, I plan on cooking all of the food every single night, like clockwork, seven days a week when I get off of work. Then obviously wake up the next morning, obviously at 5 a.m., go to the gym, work out, eat a perfect breakfast, and so on and so forth. I plan it out so perfectly, and I mean, in my head, it always sounds great. I end up getting into the week, and I get super busy, and I get super busy with a number of different things, obviously work and my personal life, commitments, all kinds of stuff, and ultimately I end up totally forgetting the fact that I have all this food at home and I go out to eat, right? And what ends up happening? I end up throwing all of the food, if not, again, like 30 to 40 or 50% of the food away, and I don't ever end up actually eating any of it. And on top of all of that, I spend way, way, way too much money on food eating out. I mean, essentially for me, and again, I don't know about you, but it ends up kind of being a total lose-lose situation. On average, according to Business Insider, the average American eats out 5.9 times a week. That number is kind of astonishing to me, but at the same time, I mean, it also makes total sense because I don't know about you, 
but for me, I probably do the exact same thing. So basically, depending on your age, I mean, statistically speaking here, looking at the numbers, on average, you're gonna spend between two and $5,000 a year eating out. And to be honest with you, I think that is probably the minimum of what you're going to spend eating out. Again, depending on your age and depending on obviously where you live and what it is that you do for work and things of that nature. Now, obviously that is not including the food that you buy at the grocery store and end up throwing 30 to 40% of it away. Look, basically what it boils down to is this you're most likely spending roughly, on average, $10,000 a year on food between the grocery store and eating out. And again, that, in my opinion, is the minimum. So, for the purpose of this video, let's assume $10,000 a year on food in general. That is a lot of money. I encourage you to find ways to eat out less and to waste less food when you do go to the grocery store. I also encourage you to set a budget and stick to that budget overall for your eating out and your food in general. If that budget is $7,500 a year on food, then break that down to the week by week basis and hold yourself accountable to that goal. Again, this is gonna take a lot of discipline and it certainly is not easy. But learning how to save money and invest money that you saved and not buy things that are wasteful is not only good for you, but is also good for everybody else. So basically it is a win-win. Which leads me to the fourth thing that is a win-win and that is smashing the like button. Okay, but really, the fourth thing that you're spending way too much money on is cable TV. I can't even really believe that I have to personally be the guy to tell you this, but cable TV in 2020 has got to be the dumbest thing that you are spending money on on a month to month basis. Let's just say that on average you spend $100 a month on cable TV. Now, that is absolutely ridiculous when you consider that you can watch everything essentially for free. I mean, watching this YouTube video right now is free, and I know as much as you would love to watch the Super Bowl, this video is a lot better than that. I'll even give you a tip on how to watch Netflix for free, and that is to bum a family or friend member's Netflix username and password. I mean, you can literally log in to multiple devices with one account. So why in the world would you pay for Netflix if your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, or your best friend already pays for it? Moral of the story here is that it's 2020, and while TV might not be bad for the environment or bad for animals, it is bad for your bank account, and that is good enough for me to land this one as number four on our list of the five things that you are spending way too much money on. All right, last but certainly not least, number five thing that you spend way too much money on is entertainment. This one really bothers me at my core. I mean, depending on the source that you're researching, on average, on average, Americans spend 150 to $200 billion a year on entertainment. And yeah, that was with a B, which is really just insane. I mean, do we really need to be entertained all the time? What in the world are we even spending that money on? Here is a list of things that we spend it on. Movies, shows, music, movie theaters, fashion, animation, sports, games, books, comedy, video games, sporting events, magic shows, carnivals, concerts, food festivals, shopping festivals, travel, amusement parks. I mean, I didn't even have the slightest clue as to how much money we really spent on entertainment until I started looking into this topic on a deeper level. That is insane to me to think about. I mean, we really are not capable of just being complacent and just hanging out with a friend or staying in for the night and making some food or whatever the case is. According to my research, the average American spends about $3,000 a year on entertainment, or about $250 a month. I encourage you to find things that you can do that don't cost a ton of money so that you can save your money and ultimately use that money to make you more money. 
Do things like riding your bike that has been in your shed for years and years and years, and I know you've got to dust it off, but give it a try, take it out, and go for a ride. Go hiking, go on a walk or a jog or have a picnic, go camping, go to the park, walk your dog, or even just meditate and work on bettering yourself. Look, here's the deal. As Americans, we spend way too much money every single month on entertainment. I mean, the reality of it is, if you made it this far in the video, you must care on some level about your finances. And on some level, you must want a better future for yourself, or at least your future family. I'm here to tell you that everyone that has an incredible life that I know did not get there on accident. They had a lot of discipline, they worked extremely hard, they saved and they sacrificed, and after enough time went by, they finally became successful. I encourage you to take a long, hard look at what you are spending your money on every single day and see where you can cut that back a little bit. See what you can do to save a little bit more money and ultimately invest that money to make you more money so that eventually you can live the life you've always wanted to live. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Also, drop in the comment section down below what you would like to see in a future video. Smash that like button if you have not already and I will see you in the next one.